Welcome to Friday Classic Hymns. Today we're looking at one of the greats, Rock of Ages, which I know was voted as Britain's favorite hymn once. It really is a classic, but it's hardly sung anymore. When last did you sing this song? I'd love to know if you'd share it in the comments below, because I think that it isn't sung as often as it should be anymore. For me, though, this is a special one, because my friend Rich wrote a kind of rock and roll version of this hymn, and for years we've traveled around and played this in churches, and it was his version that kind of awakened me to the power of these words. So there is place for different versions of great hymns, and I'll play them both for you later at the end of the video. It's a brilliant hymn, and it has an interesting story. Let me tell it to you. Rock of Ages was written by Augustus Montague Toplady. What a name. Born in 1740 in England, he grew up in an Anglican home, but he was converted at the age of 16 in a barn in Ireland. And he even commented on this later on in his life, saying how strange that he who grew up in such a distinguished church would be converted or saved under the preaching of somebody who probably couldn't even spell his own name out in a barn. He ended up studying theology straight out of school and became ordained as an Anglican priest at the age of 22. And he had a long career as a priest. He was well loved and revered. He was known as a very serious and fiery man who was deeply committed to the ways of God. And he was born into the era of the Wesleys when the Methodist movement was sweeping through England. And initially, Top Lady was very excited by this movement. He really took to what the Wesleys were preaching and was very blessed by what they did. But then he changed his mind because theologically he started to disagree with them. The Wesleys spoke about free will, about how you would have to choose Jesus. Top Lady came to believe that, no, God chooses you. You've got no power to even choose him or not. Calvinist thinking. The Wesleys believed in perfection, Christian perfection, that you could live a holy life, a truly holy life. Top Lady, much like any Calvinist, believed you're stained by sin always until you're glorified. And so... Him and Wesley became kind of enemies, and Top Lady wrote some very horrible things about Wesley, calling him a devil and, and a worker of Satan and stuff like this. Wesley then responded by, you know, publishing stuff saying, Top Lady, this, this, this. And so they had a bit of a feud going. And so it's actually quite ironic that Top Lady's famous hymn, Rock of Ages, was probably kind of plagiarized from a Wesley hymn book that was published 30 years before he wrote and published Rock of Ages. The preface to this hymn book said this, O rock of Israel, rock of salvation, rock struck for me, let those two streams of blood and water which once gushed out of thy side bring down pardon and holiness into my soul, and let me thirst after them now, as if I stood upon the mountain when sprang this water, and near the cleft of that rock, the wounds of my Lord, whence gushed this sacred blood. Now, it's very likely that Top Lady based his hymn on those words. They're the only words of that sort of description that had been published up to that point. But there is another story that is often associated with the hymn Rock of Ages. And the story goes that Top Lady was walking around one day and a huge storm blew in out of nowhere. The next thing, he was looking around for shelter because lightning and thunder was crashing about. And so he looked over and he saw a big rock with a split in it. And he ran off and stood in the cleft of that rock. And as he stood there, the words to this hymn came to mind. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. And so the legend goes that he looked around and found like a playing card lying on the floor. And he picked it up and wrote that line on it so that he would remember it. Now it's a great story, but it's almost certainly not true. And in fact, one of the books that I use for research for these videos said that the story only began circulating 30 or 40 years after Top Lady had died. And so it was most probably just a legend. But the song became an instant classic and it was sung for many, many years, pretty much every Sunday, anywhere in a church. People were singing the song because it so beautifully summarizes the gospel message. Now Top Lady sadly died as a young man at the age of 38. He had health issues and he died far too young. But just look at these final words of Top Ladies, and you can get a sense of where his heart was at when he knew he was close to death. He said, My heart beats every day stronger and stronger for glory. Sickness is no affliction, pain no cause, death itself no dissolution. My prayers are now all converted to praise. 
And so, of course, he lives on in glory. But on earth, he lives on through the words of this great song. Let's take a look at what he wrote. The famous first verse says, Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. So you can see where the the legend came from, that he was hiding in a rock in a storm. It would make perfect sense. But if you look at the words from that Wesley hymn book, it seems like the rock of ages is, is God, of course, the rock of salvation, strong, solid, you know, unflinching and yet wounded. The, the cleft, the split is the, the wounds on Christ's body, which he were inflicted on him when he died for us. And so Top Lady says, let me hide, <laughs> let me hide in the rock of ages in those cleft's you know, which means so much to me. Because he goes on to say, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side, which flowed, be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Or other versions say, save me from its guilt and power. Same thing, just different way of phrasing it. I love this verse. He says, the water and the blood which flowed. Now this is an image that comes out of John's gospel, number one, when Jesus died on the cross, they stuck the spear into his side to see that he was dead and he was because water and blood flowed but in first john chapter 5 john talks about this and talks about how the water and the blood are a witness and this thinking of the water and the blood being a double cure is very powerful the double cure is saved from wrath saved from god's punishment saved from his anger and made pure and it's so strange that he said this because this is a very wesleyan way of thinking The double cure, in fact, is a a very Wesleyan theology. In fact, I've got a book called The Double Cure by an old Methodist minister, which is all about this, about how Jesus' death not only forgives us, saves us from God's punishment, but it makes us pure. It makes us able to live holy lives. It's only his grace, but it's it's what he does. And so do you know the double cure, friends? The, the forgiveness of God so you don't have to face God's anger, but also the purifying of God, cleansing you and making you into a new person, living in light rather than darkness, holiness rather than sin. That's what the Rock of Ages does. And that's what his death accomplished for us. Know today, friends, that you can be forgiven by Christ and you can be made pure and holy by his grace. Verse 2 says this, Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's commands. Demands is another one. I have to use the American pronunciation to get the rhyme. And then he goes on, Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Now, do you see what he's saying there? He's saying, no matter how hard I try to work to earn my salvation, I can labor with my hands as much as I want. I, but I still won't be able to fulfill the Lord's commands or demands. He says, if, if my zeal would never stop, if I was continually zealous for God, I would still fall short. Could my tears forever flow? If I could just weep and weep, you know, in sorry sadness for my sins, it would still not work. It would still not earn my way to salvation. All of that could not atone for my sin, he says. All for sin could not atone. Thou must save. God must save. And God alone, nothing I do can earn me God's salvation. What a wonderful verse. And it's so great to sing these types of verses, friends. The theology is so rich and so powerful. We should be singing theologically rich songs like these. Verse 3 says, nothing in my hand I bring. So the same type of thing. I'm not bringing anything to try to say, Lord, look what I've done. Now love me. Simply to the cross I cling, he says. Only by clinging to the cross. And resting on what Jesus has done, do I have any stand? Naked, come to thee for dress. Helpless, look to thee for grace. Foul, I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. So he says, look at me. I'm naked, I'm helpless, I'm foul. I've got nothing. I've got nothing to offer you, Lord. I need you to wash me. And of course, Jesus washes us clean. Jesus is the water, the living water that can cleanse us. And take our foul, helpless, naked state and cleanse us and clothe us in righteousness and goodness. Oh, do you come to God humble or do you come saying, look what I bring in my hands, Lord. This is, this is me. You can, <laughs> you can save me because of this. Oh, no, nothing in my hand I bring. Only him washing me clothes me in righteousness and makes me ready to meet him. And then verse 4, 
is a great verse which says, while I draw this fleeting breath, in other words, while I'm still breathing, and when mine eyes shall close in death, when I die too, when I soar to worlds unknown and see thee on thy judgment throne. We're all going to face the judgment throne, friends. What are you going to say? Well, he's going to say, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. When he sees God on the judgment throne, the only thing that he's going to be able to say is, well, I'm, I'm hidden in your love. I've got nothing to bring, but I'm hidden in your love. I am safe in the Rock of Ages, who was cleft for me. What a powerful hymn. What a powerful collection of words reminding us that God's grace is all we have. And it is only by being hidden in him, the rock of ages, that we can find our way with God. Friends, don't try to earn your way. Don't try to earn your way. Just rely on the love that God has for you and live wholly out of that because he loves you, not to make him love you. What love he has for us. Now, I want to sing two versions of it. The first one is the traditional one that you all probably know and love. And the next one is the version that my friend Rich wrote. It's kind of a rock and roll version, and so maybe you won't like it. Maybe you do. Please share in the comments if you really love one of them, or please share in the comments as well, you know, what words meant something to you. Maybe some line of the song really touched you. Share it all down below so we can all just share in this song. And I hope you'll sing with me as we sing Rock of Ages now. Yeah, for me. 
Let me hide myself in thee.